Hey guys, so we're back again with another reading and this one is all about their late night fantasies when it comes to you. So what is going through their mind late at night when thoughts of you come up? What are they thinking, feeling, reminiscing about, fantasizing about? We're going to get into all of it and we do have an extended version of this over on Patreon. So if this reading does resonate with you and you would like to know more, then head to the link in my description and underneath the timestamps in the comments to watch the extended version on Patreon. And of course, when you do sign up for Patreon, you get access to all my extended readings, probably around 40 additional readings now about life, love, spirituality, career, all different kinds of topics. We just did a very deep career reading that was just posted a couple days ago and there's all different kinds of topics for you guys to listen to, choose from, and watch. So definitely check that out if that's something you would be interested in. The link for that is in my description and underneath the timestamps in the comments for my Patreon. We also do vote on new topics as well and you're able to suggest topics so there's a lot of fun there and I hope you guys will check it out. So with that being said today we have a lovely little selection of desserts for you guys to choose from. I was kind of thinking of this as like a make your own Sunday kind of vibe. So of course you're not going to pick it like that as I've said before. You are going to go with the one your energy is feeling called to and drawn to. But that was my idea. It was kind of like a deconstructed Sunday. So maybe the ice cream is sticking out to you. Maybe the brownie bite is sticking out to you. But again you want to choose based on the energy that's calling your name or maybe a message you hear in your head of the item. But Whichever one is calling your name will be the pile with the message for you. So we are starting off with pile one. Then we have number two, number three, and finally number four with the ice cream. So also I do have private readings on my website, briarrosetarot.com. So if you would like to get a private one-on-one -on -one session with me, you can get that over there. We, there are half hour, full hour sessions and you can get a live reading with me or a pre-recorded reading and you get to decide kind of how it goes, what kind of questions we tune into, of course within reason, but most of the questions are totally allowed so you can really ask whatever you want and we will tune into it so if you would like to get that like I said head to my website briarrosetarot.com and get a session with me so with all of that being said thank you guys so much for watching and let's dive into pile one Hey pile one, so for your tarot, you guys got the Page of Swords, Judgment, the Magician, Three of Wands, Seven of Cups, and the Justice card. So I do feel like, first of all, your person definitely fantasizes about getting to be in touch with you. I'm almost getting a little bit of a competitive vibe from them with you. I know that's really odd, but I feel like in a way... They definitely keep track and keep score of what you guys are up to. And pile one, I feel like you guys have been keeping them on their toes with that three of wands. Maybe you guys have been traveling quite a bit or just doing different cool unexpected things on your social media. But it feels like they are definitely like paying attention to everything you're doing and almost afraid of looking dumb or stupid around you. Um... Also, the Page of Swords can be a card talking about fear of commitment. So I don't know if that was you or them, but it can be someone who's kind of like cut off from their emotions, kind of on to the next always, like wanting to keep moving and not get things that emotional. So I feel like some of you guys, that could have been your energy, but it could be reversed, of course, take it how it resonates. But it's almost like this person sees you as that kind of person, that kind of archetype as like you're always on to the next, you're always doing things. And it's almost like they never had time for me anyway. They rejected me anyway. And I feel like this person is a little bit resentful of that. Like I feel like they feel you never made space for them in your life. And so because of that, there's almost like this competitiveness of like I'm going to show them how awesome I am and I'm going to prove to them that like I don't need them. And I do feel like this person, it almost might be a weird vibe, like on social media, you post a photo and they haven't posted a photo in forever and the next thing you know, they post a photo. Or you go somewhere on your stories and the next thing you know, they go to that same restaurant on their stories like a few days later. And I do feel like a motivation of this is like this competitive vibe. It's kind of like they... 
um, want you to know that they can kind of compete with you or hang. You know what I mean? Like they are good enough. I feel like this is very like unconscious for them, but it's like deep in their subconscious. There is this feeling of not being worthy. And also I feel like honestly what you guys have going on pile one is really cool. Like I feel like you guys are doing something with your life or your lifestyle that's just cool, probably objectively cool. Like most people would think it's cool, not just this person or not just through the rose colored glasses of love is it cool but it's cool just period across the board everyone would agree so I feel like this person spends a lot of time as almost like hater energy <laughs> but I'm not saying they're actually a hater but I feel like they it's like what do they say there's a thin line between love and hate and I feel like in a way they just maybe they feel rejected by you. I could definitely see that vibe, that energy of like they felt rejected by you. They felt like you turned them down. And so now they're like, well, screw them. And I don't care about them. And I'm going to prove that I'm better off without them. But honestly, I feel like they stay checking your social media. They stay thinking about you all the time. We got the seven of cups. So I feel like they definitely think about all these scenarios and almost like their mind runs to worst case scenarios, imagining that you're dating someone or imagining that you're like moving across the world and you're living this exciting life and or m imagining that you have this amazing job and you're probably meeting all these attractive people like I don't know I feel like this person yeah they are competitive with you but they also they there's also this underpinning of love but tempered by that rejection tempered by that feeling of loss or that feeling of almost judgment from you like oh they rejected me I, oh I'm not good enough for them oh pile one is better than me okay well I'm gonna show them um and I almost feel like they would love a scenario in which you, I know this sounds horrible, but like lost all your money or something and it had to come crawling back to them or you were like, um, you know, sliding in the DMs and being like, oh my gosh, you're I, the love of my life and I'm so sad that we're not together. Like I feel like they would just love that. That would be like a dream scenario for them and they probably fantasize about some scenario like that. Like I just heard come crawling back. <laughs> So I feel like they want that vibe. They want that feeling of like, and I'm hearing that song from Florida Georgia Line. Um, I can't remember the name of the song, but all about how they want their girlfriend or wife to come crying back and apologizing. I still can't believe that's an actual song, but it is. Um, I feel like that's what they want. They want you to be kind of like humbled. <laughs> I know that's horrible to say, but I feel like that's almost because this person doesn't feel good enough for you. You know, they don't feel like how they are now versus how you are now that they're good enough. They feel like you're better than them on a very deep level. And this might be really far into their subconscious. And so I feel like there's just this little trauma ball on their end of like feeling rejected by you, feeling not good enough for you. And so they're kind of reacting with a very, um, um, immature petulant vibe of like well I'm gonna show them you know um but yeah I think they definitely think about you quite a lot we got the seven of cups and we got the magician card so sometimes when someone is thinking of you all the time like it's almost a form of manifesting they probably don't consciously know they're doing that but for my psychically sensitive um viewers and stuff you guys might feel like, why do I keep, I'm like walking down the street, I'm having a great day. And then randomly I'm inundated with thoughts of this ex. And I literally am minding my business. I'm not trying to think of them. I'm not reminiscing, but like I just become overcome with thoughts of them. And that might be because they are thinking of you very intensely at that moment, because I do feel like this person does that quite a lot. I feel like they think about you all the time reminisce about you all the time and for those of them who are with current partners which I do feel like I could see a lot of them being with a new partner because again I feel like there's this vibe of them wanting to prove you wrong wanting to prove they've moved on so you know they might think well I'm gonna get into another relationship and prove to them I'm happy but I feel like this other partner just doesn't compare to you at all and I feel like in a way like they compare their partner to you all the time whenever maybe the going gets tough like whenever there's an argument or whenever this partner doesn't understand 
um, this person because I do feel like you guys had a very intense understanding of each other like right off the bat it was just always like unspoken like almost soul connection or past life connection very intuitive with each other like you just got each other and you knew what each other meant without having to speak for 10 hours about a certain subject you just be kind of on the same page or at least understanding where the other person was coming from very intuitively very innately and I feel like this other partner they just don't have that kind of connection with them they just don't have this level of unspoken like understanding um and so i feel like that's a factor that makes them compare and that's a factor that makes them reminisce a lot and almost feel robbed or cheated i feel like this person not gonna lie i feel like this person has a little bit of a victim mentality where maybe when they could have taken an attitude of like you know what this relationship it's yeah it didn't work out you know I tried my best they tried their best they're a good person I'm a good person and it just didn't happen and that's how like the cookie crumbles I feel like they do a lot of blaming you you know they do a lot of oh so they're shallow and they thought I wasn't good enough for them and it's probably because of this like I feel like that's just because they're not really capable to process the full level of pain and the full feeling of inadequacy because it's almost like they might have dealt with other rejections before but they could handle it because they didn't care that much but with you I feel like they're so sensitive they're so emotionally tied into you and almost I want to say emotionally desperate for you that I feel like the loss of you was something that they really struggled with. It was something that not getting to see you every day, not getting to talk to you, not getting to... And, and it feels like to them, they're also saying that this relationship, they missed out on making it something more. Like for some of you guys, this might not have ever been a full relationship or there was something they thought they were going to accomplish within the relationship that never happened. Like maybe thought they thought you guys were going to get engaged, but you broke up after a couple weeks of dating or, you know, you were dating for months, but then you broke it off or maybe it never reached the flirting stages but there's a there's a big feeling of like what if and what could have been what should have been like this should have been something a lot more worthwhile yeah a lot more worthwhile a lot more permanent and it never reached that stage and I feel like this person doesn't really have the tools emotionally to deal with this honestly I feel like they should probably hire a therapist or something like that because it just feels like they are definitely struggling with the regrets and blame like it's almost like they they would be so upset if it was their fault so instead they're just going to blame you 100 percent, and they're just going to be like it was them it was all them it's kind of like you're the scapegoat you know for whatever went wrong in this relationship it's like they're just totally like i said putting it on you 100 percent. and i think that on one hand they're proud of the things you've accomplished on in your life on the other hand i do feel like they definitely resent it and they kind of wish that you weren't doing these amazing things because i do feel like pile one you're doing well for yourself or you look really good or something but they're acknowledging that like on social media they see all this stuff you're up to they see all this stuff you're doing and they are like wow okay so they're doing really good and i feel like honestly for them it's a little bit bittersweet because on one hand they do on a deep deep soul level want to see you do well but on a human level i feel like they are like i said a little competitive with you and resentful of the fact that you don't seem to be so sad like i feel like in a way they're like i'm miserable i'm so sad i am absolutely desperate for this person and i'm maybe spent months like crying myself to sleep or just feeling such a loss and look at them they're doing fantastic and they just seem like they look great they're feeling good and I feel like that's just very hard for them to take so I'm gonna pull some song cards and I just have it in my little plastic bag so I'm not gonna show you guys <laughs> but I promise I am shuffling I'm not like purposefully pulling let's see what this card is always be my baby mariah carey and wait for me hollow notes so those are kind of similar vibes like again i feel like this person and i just heard it i always hear that line from the notebook in my mind when it's this kind of vibe which is like it's not over it still isn't over i don't know why i always hear that one so dramatic but i feel like that's how they feel like in the notebook that was like 10 years later right it was like they had yeah i think it was 10 years later 
maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but I feel like it was a while after the breakup, but they still had just as strong feelings. And a lot of people will say, you know, that like even when they're like 80, they still think of their first love or whatever. Maybe this was the first love for some of you guys or something like that. But I feel like this is something that, and speaking of, you know what, the other thing I got, Diplomat Sun, Vampire Weekend, How Deep Is Your Love, The Bee Gees. So, Diplomat Sign is a song all about like this forbidden love, um, like they're gay in the 80s and one's the son of a diplomat so they can't be together or whatever and I think they're at college is the vibe but um, they obviously like can't be together I guess because of the homophobia whatever going on so they yeah so that's the story and I feel like the ending of the song is like um and then he says, like, looking out over the river, I see a car um, parked there by the river, all black with diplomatic plates. So basically the saying is, like, he's walking back along the river to wherever he lives. And this guy that he had the relationship with is watching him out the back of the car, which sounds really creepy, actually, now that I say it. But, like, you know, still obviously has those feelings. Like, they can't be together in the physical, but he still cares enough about him to, like, want to see him, to, to be kind of lurking and creeping and trying to watch what he's up to and as much as that might sound creepy I guess now that I'm actually spelling it out I didn't think it was creepy before but now that I'm saying it it does sound creepy but I feel like that's kind of this feeling is like this person feels maybe some guilt and shame even about how much they care about you maybe they are embarrassed by the fact that they do check your socials maybe they don't really have the words to talk about this with their friends they might not have like a close friend group where they can just be like oh my god I'm still so hung up on my ex I mean probably a lot of people would be judgmental if you said that to any of your friends male female whatever but I feel like especially men are judgmental to each other of like feelings like that they'll call each other simps or whatever you know um and I think women would also be like oh my gosh girl you need to be empowered you know so it's across the board like sometimes people don't feel comfortable with those deep expressions of emotion or those deep feelings that are kind of messy and aren't like stamped with approval by like we got married or something like that um we kind of need things to be very like cut or dry you know so it's like oh they're not to you guys aren't together anymore you need to get over it and i feel like this person honestly has had like time har a hard time psychologically dealing with this dealing with feelings of shame about the relationship being over and why they can't move on and wondering and questioning to themselves like why do i still think of this person this is so embarrassing for me this is just this is there's something wrong with me even they they might feel like there was something wrong with them because they keep thinking of you but I do feel like the feelings for that they have for you are just as strong and it's like when you do post and they get kind of a little hit of your energy through social media I feel like it just confirms to them that you're still that same person that they fell in love with you're still this kind of enigma riddle to them that they can't really solve and they're still just as focused and intensely plugged into like I'm so curious about this person. I want to know everything about them. But I do feel like they question whether you feel the same way back. We got how deep is your love. Um, and the line from that that's coming to my mind is, and it's me, you need to show how deep is your love. So I feel like this person, they don't know. They, they definitely question whether you feel the same. And there's this feeling that I keep getting of like, am I crazy? Do I... Am I delusional? Do I think of pile one and I'm the only one doing this and this is just a waste of time and I'm this weirdo? Like, it's funny because like I said, I never thought of Diplomat Sun as a creepy song before. It's just like, to me, a romantic song. But now that I'm spelling it out, I guess I'm like, oh, that is kind of creepy. And it's funny that that's coming through in this reading because I feel like that's because this person views themselves through a lens of being kind of creepy. I don't know if they have strong Scorpio placements or something because I am feeling also like the lurking th vibe at the end of that song is kind of what this person does. Like they it wouldn't maybe feel appropriate to them to actually message you to actually talk to you although I think they would like that but I feel like they they feel like it would they would look like a total weirdo so instead they get what they can from your social media they get what they can from trying to connect with you on the astral plane let's see if there's any other songs that want to come out I can't go for that Holland Oats and bruises chairlift so two hollow notes so songs maybe they are a um 
Hollow Notes fan or something. We got a lot of 80s music or like old music, I guess, because BG's is 70s, I think. But anyway, um, I feel like this person with I Can't Go For That, this is where, like again, I said, I feel like they, del they deliberate a lot about maybe reaching out to you and they might have really gone back and forth in the past, but I feel like ultimately they just kind of chickened out every time and now I feel like they think it's way too late. Um, so there's a sense for them that they're not going to like ruin their pride by being the one to reach out. They're not going to make a fool of themselves, make a clown of themselves. And I also feel like they are a little resentful with bruises by chairlift, um, that maybe they feel like they got kind of banged up by this relationship by this time you had together. Like they feel like it took a number out of them. It really did affect them. You know, they were, uh, it wasn't just like, okay, well, we broke up, but we're still friends. What is it that Gwyneth Paltrow said? Conscious uncoupling, where everything's cool and copacetic and everyone leaves the relationship fine. It feels like they got like effed up by this relationship, like m emotionally. And I feel like they still blame you. Like they still felt very hurt. Like in a way, they thought of you as their forever or their everything. And so when things didn't work out, I feel like, it just, they couldn't understand. It's almost like, have you ever had, you know, what I'm getting the image in my mind is of like a person stepping on their dog's paw. And you know how like, if you've ever done that, you feel so guilty and the dog owner will be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because you can see that look of betrayal in the dog's eyes of like, oh my gosh, this is my owner. This is my everything. And it, they just hurt me and stepped on my paw. Um, and I feel like that's how this person kind of felt towards you is like, they thought of you as so perfect and so loving and giving and like their future. And then I feel like it's almost like you took your energy back away is what they're, they're kind of saying. It, it might be flipped. Again, take it out what resonates, but it might I feel like they just feel like you took your energy away and you are like withholding from them. Like they wanted all of you and you were like, nope, you're not getting it. And I feel like they think that's kind of cold. Let's get some astrology for pile one. So we got the ninth house, Aquarius, and we got Neptune. Wow. So those might be some of your placements. You might have Sagittarius placements or ninth house placements, Aquarius or 11th house placements, and Neptune or Pisces placements. But um, this is definitely what I was talking about with I could see you guys traveling a lot, experiencing new things. It feels like you're just living a really cool, vivid life with that ninth house energy, Sagittarius energy. There's also a lot of wisdom in you, pile one. You have ninth house and Neptune placements or that's what's coming across. So that's a philosopher, that's someone who might be highly educated, or just studies philosophy as a hobby or spirituality as well. Jupiter and, and Neptune definitely are religious elements. So it feels like maybe you are familiar with tarot or astrology, but there's a deep wisdom within you. There's this deep knowledge. And I feel like this person really looked up to you. Like, I feel like you guys have a really cool vibe. And I know I mentioned that before, but this is just confirming with that Aquarius. And it feels like you just keep people on their toes. It feels like you you know, whatever this person thought you were going to do after the breakup, I feel like you guys did a hard pivot. Like you just did the opposite, but you managed to pull it off. Like it's almost like some of you guys have really transformed yourself or really grown or really, really, really changed from when this person knew you. But I feel like they still see the truth in yourself. They tr still see the true identity that you have. It's just expressed very differently from when y'all were together, but I feel like they still recognize it as you and they feel like what you're doing is so cool. There's also a distance and I, it's funny I keep seeing, saying the word cool. I don't think I've ever said it so many times in my life, but that's what's coming to mind. And also coolness as like a metaphysical concept is, you know, maybe a little emotionally withdrawn, a little cold, a little emotionally. And I feel like that's kind of what I'm getting as well. Like I've said that a few times that there's a distance from you. Like if it feels like they're saying, and I'm hearing that line from that song by Gotche, where he says, you didn't have to be so cold. And I feel like that's the thing is like, they wanted really everything from you. They wanted something very serious and deep and intense. And I feel like on a certain level, you kind of pulled away or maybe you, I don't know, it was too much for you or something, but 
it feels like you guys are living your best life. So I don't know, maybe it was a good choice, you know, even though you might be missing this person, but feels like you guys are doing really well, um, at least in this person's eyes, but they definitely would like more of your time, energy, and attention. But they see you as very beautiful, very dreamy, and, and just exciting. Like, I feel like if you were a TV show, you'd be, they'd be tuning in every week. You'd be their favorite TV show. If you were, like, a streaming service, they'd pay whatever to watch. <laughs> you know, they they really love to see what you guys are up to and just wish they could see more, I think. So anyways, guys, I'm going to be finishing this reading over on my Patreon. We're going to be doing an extended, pulling some messages from them and getting a lot more info about their feelings for you. So if you would like to check that out, then head on over to the link in my description and underneath the timestamps in the comments. And we're going to go into a lot of detail about their feelings and about what they're thinking, whether they do have plans to actively reach out or when that might be, um, and everything else that's going on in their head when it comes to you. So definitely check that out if you would like to join us at Patreon. And like I said, when you do sign up, you get access to all my existing readings. So over 35, I think around 40 different readings all about different kinds of subjects. And there's career readings, love, spirituality, relocation, all topics, so many different topics. So definitely check that out, guys. I would love to see you over there if you want to finish this one out. Um, and if you guys would like a private one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can also get that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. And that link is in my description as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back very soon for another reading. Take care, guys. Bye. Hey pile two, welcome to your reading. So for your tarot, you guys got the Emperor, Seven of Swords, Nine of Pentacles, the Devil, King of Swords, and the Two of Cups. So I feel like your person, they might have a lot of fantasies about coming to you when they're at a higher status or position of you. They might be a little bit competitive with you on social media, and they might definitely worry about making sure that you see them in a positive light with the things that they post. So I feel like they would fantasize about coming Coming to you in a situation where they have a higher status or where they're really looking good. Some of you guys might have also felt drawn to pile one and if you did I definitely would suggest watching that as well because I'm kind of getting some similar vibes from this. But I feel like this person definitely is like I said wanting to put their best foot forward when it comes to you. It's like deep down they have a lot of these feelings for you and they kind of worry if they're good enough for you. I don't necessarily think they would say that out loud, but I feel like that's the insecurity underpinning this, is that this person is concerned that you're going to think they're just not good enough. And I do feel like they might have fantasies about coming to you in a way where they're looking to be very powerful. We have the Emperor leading off the reading over the Devil card. So I feel like for them, this is a big fantasy they have of like showing up with a lot of status or showing up looking amazing and you can't ignore them or showing up and you know having such charm or having a situation where you're just like oh my gosh this person is such a catch and I really missed out on them. I, I think a lot of people have a fantasy of like running into their ex and it's always like where they're looking their best. You know, it's always when you're fantasizing about running into someone, you never want to be like out in your pajamas with like zit cream still on your face and you know, an unwashed, unwashed hair or whatever, you always want to be looking your best. And I feel like their fantasies are kind of like a logical magnification of that or multiplication of that. Like it's kind of the more extreme side of that fantasy where they definitely not only want to be kind of looking their best version of themselves, but even be a better version of themselves, even be very wealthy, have a lot of status, have a lot of power, something like that, where you would just be in awe of them and where, you know, they could just picture your eyes widening and being like, oh my God, that's your car? Or wait, what do you do for your career? Or did you just tell me you went, you just came back from a trip to like London or something? I feel like they definitely would think about stunting on you and impressing you and having you just realize what a success they are and maybe realize a little bit of what you missed out on. I can tell that this person is very sexually attracted to you with this devil card and in a little bit of a way I do feel like they have that kind of resentment and I think sometimes that can be common when someone really has a crush on someone or really likes them that maybe at the same time they resent that person for taking their focus away for making them feel these feelings. They might even worry about being a bit of a simp when it comes to you or even worry about 
looking foolish or you not thinking they're good enough. Um, and I feel like they do have that kind of competitiveness a little bit with you. So that's why I said you might feel drawn to pile one because there were some similarities and I could definitely see that resonating with you as well. So you might check that out, of course, too. But then we also have the seven of swords. So I do feel like this person would keep it kind of on the DL how much they're looking at your content. They definitely wouldn't want you to know the extent to which they are checking out where you're going. I'm also hearing that they might try to run into you when you're out. So they might like randomly if you post a story from a club or from a bar, they might show up there like an hour later and you might have had experiences like that where you're running into them and you're like, this is so odd. Like suddenly I just, I've run into them the past five Tuesdays in a row. And I feel like this person definitely might keep tabs on you, but keep it kind of secret. Or if you're posting your morning coffee every morning and you're hashtagging the or you're tagging the location and you're saying where it's at then this person might start going there for coffee as well and you might not even notice that you might not run into them actually at that time but they might be going there every morning at a different time just hoping to run into you i do feel like they keep it kind of secret and they don't want everyone to know because i do feel like this person worries about their reputation a little bit they worry about what other people think of them what other people would say about them and they very much want to come across as some Someone who's like in control of themselves, high status, someone who has a logical mind and is intelligent and is, you know, a good reputation, respectable kind of a person. So I don't feel like they necessarily have the easiest time expressing themselves when it comes to their emotions. We did get the King of Swords with them. And the King of Swords can be a card that's a little more on the logical side rather than emotional. So definitely someone who might feel comfortable talking about like math, science, or like law or something like that, high level intellectual concepts rather than talking about their emotions and talking about feelings and that kind of a thing and crying that's not really their forte and I feel like that matters to them they don't want to come out looking like a clown when it comes to you so I would guess this person probably never told you the extent of their feelings I could see this being a situation that might have even been like a hookup situation or just a crush that never really fully crossed the line into a full relationship because it feels to me like they have a very big problem being emotionally vulnerable and really unleashing everything that they're feeling it feels like they definitely worry about playing things close to the vest and they might have even had a weird time expressing their emotions with their family or stuff like that they might have had a family that was big about like stiff upper lip or you know making sure that you weren't whiny or not coming across like a baby or not coming across like you are sad and needy they might have had parents that kind of really trained them to be really stoic they might even be into stoicism um, or post quotes from that you know because I feel like this person I could see them being very ambitious I also could see this person like hitting the gym or being very disciplined about certain things in their life. Like maybe they're disciplined about what they eat or about their routine, or maybe they just listen to a lot of podcasts or something that has to do with that. But to me, it feels like they're very goal oriented. And so yeah, they might exist in spaces where there are terms thrown around like simp and then they think that, you know, just a normal healthy relationship is like simping and they might feel like they don't want to look like a fool by, you know, really coming clean to you and talking about how emotional they are and telling you that they feel really vulnerable. So I feel like a lot of their fantasies are about making money, coming back and kind of showing off to you, kind of having you have a moment of surprise because you're like, oh my, gosh pile two ended up being such a success and I can't believe how like what they've accomplished I can't believe that they're driving this car I can't believe that they're wearing that kind of a suit I can't believe that they're working at that kind of a job title I definitely feel like they see you as a bit of a get as well they see you as successful and they see you as someone who already has a certain level of status or would only date people who are high status that you would only date someone who already has money or success or that you have money or success on your own or that you come from a wealthy family or something and they would need to impress you I don't feel like this person thinks that they can kind of be a mess and date someone like you they definitely see you as a little bit on a pedestal but they don't want you to know they don't want to like make your ego go you know what I mean I feel like that's how they would say it I wouldn't say that because I love making people feel confident I think that's very positive but I feel like they would say it like oh well I don't want this person's ego to grow um because 
I think that's kind of their way of downplaying their feelings and they don't want to have to be vulnerable. So that's kind of their excuse. It's like, oh, they might get a big ego if I told them that. But I definitely think that they find you very attractive. And also they see you as a great partner for them. Like I feel like they see you as someone who would really add to if they did have a high level job or if they did work in a very competitive space like a, you know, big law firm or maybe, um, you know, a top like what is it the big the big three accounting firms or something like that where there was maybe like I said a certain level of competitiveness or kind of um yeah something where there's a lot of competition and status jostling and that kind of a thing you would do well at like those dinner parties having you on their arm would make a good impression you would be someone that they would be proud to show off to bring to their friends bring to their family um so i also feel like that's why they don't want to kind of blow things with you by being really cringe and by coming up to you and being like hey girl or hey dude like they don't want to seem like a loser by shooting their shot in a way that might be kind of cringe and that's why I feel like they would rather run into you or just have it naturally happen over the course of the social circle they don't want to be like hi I've been thinking about you all day long they would think that's like embarrassing so even though I think I think that's romantic but I just think they wouldn't feel comfortable doing that so they're definitely going to play it close to the best let's get some song cards and I don't have a cute cup to shovel this in so I'm just gonna pull it and you guys will have to trust me that I'm not looking at the cards. Okay, so we got trains to Brazil, Guillermo, I think that's how you say that, but I could be wrong with my French. Vulnerable, Selena Gomez. Shades of Cool, Lana Del Rey. Ocean eyes, really eyelish. I do feel like you guys have really beautiful eyes and that's something they really think about. And finally, final two, Cruel Summer, Taylor Swift, and Emotion, the Bee Gees. Pal 1 got the Bee Gees as well. That's really funny. So you guys do have parallels to Pal 1. You might watch it after. Um, and then we got Cruel Summer. And that's definitely the vibe that I'm picking up on. That sums it up perfectly because that whole song is about um like i think it's about her current boyfriend or fiance or whatever he is but um when they were first getting together and she really liked him but they're kind of playing it cool over the course of this summer and they're kind of acting like both sides are acting like i don't really care and um both sides are acting like you know yeah this is just a fun fling and we're just keeping it like no strings attached and that's funny because I know I mentioned this might have been a hookup at first and I could see that or even just a crush that never reached that level because it just feels like this person really didn't get to the stage of being emotionally vulnerable with you and I feel like that's hard for them in general so that's what this song is kind of about is like a hookup that starts that way or it starts as no strings attached we're not going to get super maybe friends with benefits or something like that and then over the course of summer, those feelings are growing, but neither side wants to be vulnerable. And then she says at the like crescendo um, that she screamed, I love you. Isn't that the worst thing you ever heard? And then she says he looks up grinning like the devil. So he's really excited to hear it. He was playing it cool. And that's funny. That line we got, he looks up grinning like the devil. And you guys got the devil card. I didn't even connect that. But I really feel like this person, you know, it's kind of like they are doing what that guy she's talking about, or maybe they do want to see those feelings. Maybe they do want to take it there emotionally, but they are much more worried about looking like an idiot and looking like a clown and um, being the first to be vulnerable. I think that's hard in general, right? For everyone, it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to put wear your heart on the sleeve. It takes a lot of bravery and courage to really be honest about your emotions. And I definitely feel like this person with their kind of work Worry about what other people think and the fact that they definitely just don't want to come off as cringe I feel like that's definitely doubly hard for them they're not the best at being vulnerable but I do feel like they have a little soft spot inside of them kind of getting like cancer crab vibes with the hard shell and then the soft interior where they might seem like dispassionate they might seem like they don't care or might seem like they're very unemotional but actually deep down they're like the most emotional I'm not saying this person is a cancer but that's just what imagery I'm seeing of like the hard shell the 
hard exterior, the kind of like, mm, I don't care. Yeah, I'm just the king of swords because actually underneath there's this deep well of emotion and kind of need. And I feel like this person does really respect you and look up to you. I feel like they do put you on a little bit of a pedestal. So for them, especially coming to you and talking to you about this, it would just feel really hard, even more so than it would be for them to tell their friends about something or their family. And I don't feel like they do that. I don't feel like they really talk to their friends or their family about their feelings a lot. Um, so we also got shades of cool. And again, I think that song is kind of about being cool. So, I mean, I know that's the name, but that's kind of the vibe. I mean, that's, you know, Lana has a lot of songs kind of like that or about that. Um, and she also has a lot of those songs about, you know, I don't know what to say, financially transactional relationships, <laughs> um, relationships where, you know, maybe there's one partner who is definitely showing off all their wealth and maybe that's a ma major part of their appeal. So maybe they see you as kind of a material girl, Lana Del Rey type, where maybe you would need that really nice convertible to be impressed or you would need to be taken to like the Chateau Marmont, not you know, the days in, in order to be impressed. And I feel like, yeah, that's something that they're just like, okay, I got to bring my A game with pile two. I really got to make sure. And it's interesting we got the cherry for you guys, because I'm just thinking there's a lot of like Lolita imagery within Lana Del Rey and then the cherry. You, you know what I mean? I think that's associated with Lolita. But anyway, not to get too down that rabbit hole, but I'm just saying they might feel like they kind of really have to reach a certain level of status and power because the emperor is kind of that ultimate status guy who's kind of strong, willed, tough, powerful, um, who has a lot of, like I said, power, who has a lot of strength, who is very in control of his emotions and kind of dogmatic and rule-based as well. Um, so they might just feel like I'm not ready yet. I'm not strong enough. I'm not tough enough. I'm even seeing an image of someone like hitting the gym, trying to get their muscles bigger because they're trying to maybe fit that archetype a little bit stronger or get this kind of a body that we see on the devil card. Because so those are some ripped mus muscles. Um, let's get some, but with the two of cups ending that, that's proof to me that this person does have emotions for this. And like I said, there's the hard shell, but underneath there is a lot of emotion for you. And there is this feeling that you guys have a deep connection and could like talk about anything. You're on the same page with a lot of things emotionally. Like you guys really understand each other and really have a deep connection because that's what the two of cups is about is just that feeling of being drawn to someone and feeling like this person emotionally gets you and that you can really flow with them. Even if if you're in a crowded room surrounded by other people and that's another Selena Gomez song crowded room so and she says even in a crowded room baby it's just me and you so you know that definitely fits this whole reading so let's get some astrology dice okay so we got Neptune and then this one is Pisces so heavy Pisces and 10th house Capricorn so let me spin this one more time and see if we get any more signs since that was double Pisces Taurus. Perfect. Ah, that's perfect for you guys. Taurus being all about luxury and we definitely have some luxury vibes going on here I feel. Um, so again this person might perceive you as like they're not going to approach you to take you on a date and get you like something off the dollar menu at McDonald's, they're going to definitely want to take you on that date and take you out to like a nice steakhouse or take you out and have it be really over the top or take you to a nice gala or something like that. And I feel like they perceive you as someone who likes those kinds of things. Maybe you like the finer things in life, you like to travel or you like to go fancy places, but they definitely think that when it comes to you, um, that you might also have a lot of suitors trying to date you and that they really would have to bring their A-game. They're not just going to be able to come kind of jankily and not having anything on point that they would have to make sure that everything they do is very on point and that 
it's nice, it's over the top. They might just be at a place where they're not financially successful enough that they can feel like they can give these kinds of dates and experiences to you. That might be a big part of their worries and concerns with the 10th house, house of how, um, honors and achievements and awards and also a house of career. This is a major fo focus for this person as well. Like they are very focused on achieving things, getting things done, earning that money, getting that bag, getting that cash. You know, Capricorn is all about that. Saturn is the hard uh, kind of hard lessons and it's a very hard tough energy kind of like the emperor as well it's all about that um you know kind of boundaries and restrictions and it's a very dominant energy which is definitely something that's coming through in this reading as well we'll probably save some of that for patreon but i definitely feel like this person is very you know wanting to be seen as a little bit of the dominant one in general in life, like someone who has things figured out, someone who people listen to, someone who people kind of defer to. That's the vibe they would like for themselves. Um, and they definitely worry about what other people think. And I am hearing that you would look amazing on their arm, that some of you guys look amazing when you wear a sundress. Um, and I feel like, I don't know if you met them last summer when you were wearing a sundress or there was some time when you wore a sundress, but if you did, that's definitely something they think about in their mind. Some of you guys have really gorgeous legs um, or they just might fantasize about the, that scenario and like taking you out to like, I don't know, maybe the, con the a company picnic or something company barbecue and you being in a sundress and just looking really beautiful I feel like some of you guys are just stunners and just physically super beautiful like hair makeup on point just looking gorgeous um, and that's something that I think definitely matters to them like they love the idea of everyone seeing you guys together we also have Neptune Neptune is very dreamy that rolls over Pisces in the 12th house so I do feel like they have dreams of you I feel like they kind of see you on the astral plane and actually i think for them this relationship and connection has been really cool because i think a lot of times they think in a very kind of logical binary way where things are very black and white and you know maybe there's not a lot of emotion they are the king of swords so a lot of times how they think about things is very like by the books very logical very like just facts and logic vibes, you know, uh, mathematical and that kind of a thing and not super emotional. But I feel like you really bring that side of them out and kind of awaken them to see things in a more magical, dreamy, almost manic pixie dream girl kind of way. Like I feel like you would get them to stop and smell the roses and stop and see things in a really beautiful, different way in like a cute way or maybe you would you know beg them to get ice cream and so they're like okay fine and then they end up being like it's really a nice spring day and like this ice cream is so nice and even though it's not on my fitness routine like it's just always so fun with pile too they're always kind of pushing me to take time out to see the magic in the world so i feel like you truly just have a little magical pixie pixie dust stardust vibe about you that is something that they just really feel addicted to. They kind of can't get enough of it. And yes, they are very drawn to you pile too. So anyway, we're going to be continuing this over on my Patreon. I am going to be channeling messages. We're going to get channeled messages from them, channeled letters. And we're also going to be going into a lot more detail about when they might reach out to you next, um, if they're going to be reaching out to you and a lot more intentions, feelings, thoughts, fantasies they're getting. We're going to be going into, like I said, more of some of these crazy vibes we were picking up on but yeah we're going to be going into a lot more detail on patreon so if you would like to see that head on over to the link in my description and underneath the timestamps in the comments and when you do sign up for my patreon you get access to all my additional readings over there so over 35 additional readings about life love spirituality relocation all different kinds of topics um, and we also vote on new topics suggest new topics so there's constant content going up i just posted one all of about your career that's a really deep one so definitely check that out i would love to have you there and of course you get access to this extended reading and we really go into a lot more over there so check that out if you would like to join link like i said is in the description and underneath the timestamps in the comments and i would also love to have you join our little community over here as well so make sure to subscribe turn on notifications and of course give this reading a thumbs up if it did resonate i'd also love to hear from you in the comments how it resonated i'm always super here so if this does fit this person you're thinking of, then please do let me know. I'm always 
very, very interested to hear how it resonated for each of you. And if you guys would like a private one-on-one -on -one reading from me, you can also get that at my website, briarrosetarot.com and sign up for a half hour or a full hour session with me. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will be back very soon for another reading. So I'll see you then or see you right now over on Patreon. Take care guys. Bye. Hey Pile 3, welcome to your reading. So you guys got the Star, Ace of Swords, Queen of Swords, the Magician, Five of Cups, and the Four of Swords reversed. So I definitely feel like this person has a lot of attraction towards you. They do see you as the star and it does feel like they would like to start something really concrete with you, something that would last for a long time. Like maybe whatever you guys had in the past never actually reached the point of a long long-term relationship or never actually reach the point of something concrete like being together, being committed, being exclusive. And I do feel like this person would like that. They also see you as the queen of swords. So they might be a little bit intimidated by you and a little bit nervous or worried about like how you would react to them or whether you would be impressed with them or whether you would kind of, I don't know, have a kind of a harsh tongue or have something to say where you kind of might be, yeah, harsh on them in some way, or you might shoot them down or you might reject them in some way that would be hurtful because I do feel like they are perceiving you right now as someone who is maybe a little cut off to the possibility of being with them like you're not open like maybe you told them something like don't ever call me again or like don't ever talk to me like that again or like I know everything you're saying is a lie like you always lie or something like that I feel like they have these fears that if they were to approach you that you would just not be interested at all or you would say something really harsh and they would just be their feelings would be really hurt because they do see you as someone who's very smart very intelligent someone who you know is very well spoken as well and so for them that would just be a real feeling of loss. I feel like they think about reaching out to you quite a lot with that Ace of Swords, but then there's this fear that you are going to just be like, please, are you kidding me? And give them like the harshest rejection of their life. Like you would just cut them down with your words and they would just never recover from it. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like that is something they kind of worry about, think about, and that holds them back from actually like sliding in the DMs or sending you that text or calling you. Um, but they do think about you quite a lot and they probably do dream about you. You guys probably connect in your dreams. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're quite vivid dreams. Um, but I feel like, you know, when someone is thinking of someone so much as this person is thinking of you all the time, you might be just walking down the road, like minding your business, you know, totally focused on whatever you have going on that day. And then boom, you're just overwhelmed with thoughts of this person. And I would definitely say if that does fit you, it is because this person is actively thinking of you. And it's kind of a form of manifesting whether they realize it or not. But just like we can do magic with our minds by focusing our thoughts and intentions on something, they are focusing so much intentions and thoughts about you. They're so curious about you. I feel like they wonder how you spend your time and think a lot of give that a lot of thought. And so because of that, because they're concentrating all this effort and thought and attention on you, it pulls your attention and you kind of get that message through the astral plane. Um, but this person definitely feels this sense of loss that you guys aren't together anymore. We did get the five of cups, which is a really sorrowful card and talks specifically about emotional loss. So for them, not being with you has definitely taken a number on them and actually I think really caused them a lot of pain and they are coming through almost as apologetic. So I don't know if they did something bad or did something wrong, but they're coming through with a little bit of an energy of like, I know I messed up. I know it was my fault. I did something bad. And I feel like that seems to be echoed on both sides because to me, it feels like you are frustrated with them or this is how they perceive you as being. They think that you would be frustrated with them. And if they reach out to you, that you would like shoot them down immediately and be like, 
like, you really must be crazy if you think you can talk to me. Um, so I don't know what exactly it is that they did, but they are coming through, like I said, with kind of an apology or, or feeling bad for themselves, feeling bad about their actions. And I feel like there is a sense of regret for how they handled a certain thing. So they might have actually done something bad, like maybe there was cheating or something like that. Or it could just be that this person feels sad that they never took this to the next level and maybe it was like the the onus was on them to take things into more of the romantic space and I wouldn't be surprised if this person chickened out and things never actually reached the point of like a relationship or something because of this person's fear and intimidation towards you because the fact that they do put you on a little bit of a pedestal and they see you as so smart and intelligent and that you have lots of options and I also feel like they had a feeling that they would have all the time in the world that's what I'm hearing in my mind is all the time in the world and I feel like they had this feeling that you were always going to kind of be around as an option that sooner or later that there would be some opportunity and that they didn't really have to rush that things were just going to like magically come together and work out and I feel like that's almost something they might have told themselves to make themselves feel better or to give themselves a pass on the anxiety they were feeling when it came to actually like approaching you kind of like if you've ever had a really big paper to write and you're really nervous about it so you end up procrastinating because you end up trying to ease your anxiety by being like no it's fine I have no like I have a week left and it's, it'll be fine and I'm just gonna go play basketball with my friends or like um, you know, I have this paper due, but no, I have three days and actually I have plenty of time. Like it's fine and I'm going to do it right before. And so like, I don't even, I just need like an hour to write this. So I'm just going to go, um, you know, play video games or whatever. And then next thing you know, like the deadline passed and you're like, oh, or the deadline is right there. And you realize that you were kind of deluding yourself into this false sense of security. And I feel like that's kind of what happened with this person is like, there was so much anxiety about how they were going to approach you or a about your reaction one thing about you is they find you really cool and that you have really cool interests like I don't know if you guys share certain interests in something that maybe some people would even find a little nerdy or maybe like a lot of people wouldn't be into like maybe you guys are both into like anime or Star Wars or something like that that not everyone would think is cool or maybe you just had conversations that were so on point that it was like you felt like you were in a secret club even if there wasn't one interest in particular but it just feels like wow we vibe so well like we just are on the same page about so many things and yeah, like we're just so simpatico and we um, can have these amazing conversations. And I feel like this person just thinks of you as really cool because of that. Like they were looking for someone who would understand them. They were looking for someone who they could vibe with and get along with in this way. And when they met you, it was like, oh, wow, pile three is so cool. And pile three just gets me. Kind of like what's coming to my mind with this is that this little brownie bite thing actually has this thin layer of ganache on top. And when I, I didn't even notice it when I first bought it for some reason, but then I was like obviously putting everything together and I was holding it and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like this little layer of ganache. And that's why if you can see, it's kind of like hard. It's like randomly really square on the top. But anyway, the point is, is I was thinking about like, I've never had brownies with ganache on top, although I've had different types of brownies. I've had like chocolate chip brownies and walnut brownies and, you know, all different kinds of brownies. Um, but I was like, damn, this is like a really extra over the top brownie. Like someone made a ganache and poured ganache over it. And wow, like they went the extra mile. And I feel like that's kind of like you, like maybe with you, they, it's like if someone wants ganache on their brownies, it's not going to be easy to find, you know, they're going to be searching around like for a bakery that has ganache on brownies, or they're going to have to look up recipes to make it at home. And they're going to have to go to an extra mile. And I feel like that was the feeling with you is it's kind of like if you've ever had an extra amazing brownie like or an extra amazing pizza or something it's like yeah there's extra there's other good brownies but they're not as good as this this is like the holy grail or there's other good pizzas but this is my fave and I feel like that's the vibe with you is like this person seems like they have other options this person seems like they might be quite popular with people and like they have a lot of people that they can get along with vibe with but not to the same level that they vibe with you like you guys just feel like you have an unspoken connection where you could almost look at each other across the room and make eye contact and like burst into laughter or you could um 
you know, play pranks and you have the same sense of humor or you guys can talk about the same current events and you're both interested in the same thing. Like maybe you're both interested in a certain sector of like government, like you you love discussing the judicial system or something, I don't know. And or like, you know, you're both into like philosophy or you're both into astrology or I don't know, something that like not everyone would share and not everyone would get that I feel like you guys really have in common and this person just it's almost like they're feeling like I miss my buddy, I miss my friend, I miss this person that I used to hang out with. It's like have you ever had a certain class and then you had a friend within that class that you would always go to and talk to and even when you're out of like algebra you don't necessarily miss the math you don't necessarily miss being in algebra but you miss like Danny your friend from algebra and the jokes he would make you know or you miss Jessica and you know the funny faces she would make behind the teacher's back it was like this bonding time and you had your buddy that you looked forward to seeing and I feel like that's the vibe that this person is missing is they're like pile three was my good buddy and I just vibe with them and now now we're so separate and I just heard that song so strong in my mind that's like how long has this been going on so I don't really know I'm trying to see how that relates I I, I don't know I think that song is about I think that song, I know it's supposedly a romance song kind of like about someone who's finding out about an affair, but I know it's actually written about a bandmate who was going out and like auditioning for other bands or something and the rest of the band found out and that's what they actually wrote the song about. So either way, I feel like it's a betrayal or there might have been some betrayal here. Maybe this is why they're apologizing or you found out about something or maybe they were talking to others. But it's almost like I could see those with those two separate interpretations, like one is obviously really bad cheating, but the other is just like, well, you're trying to hustle and find another band. And maybe that doesn't mean you want to leave your previous band, but maybe you need like additional money. And so it's almost like I feel like they they're saying that whatever they did or whatever you're upset with them about or this connection that has been severed in some way or lack of interaction you guys are having right now that like they definitely didn't mean anything by it and for them I feel like if you are mad or upset with them they just don't want that to continue they they want to be able to get back to how things were let me get some songs for pile three we got Awful Things, Lil Peep, and I am not um, showing you guys as I pull because I am using, I don't have a, like a really cute um, coffee mug, so I'm just, whatever, you'll just have to trust me. We got Wildflower, Beach House, Yummy, Justin Bieber, Awful Things, Lil Peep, Sunday Morning, No Doubt, and Bleed to Love Her, Lindsay Buckingham. So it's interesting that I was picking up on this high school vibe because, or like this, I kept mentioning metaphors from like classrooms and stuff because we got Awful Things by Lil Peep, which is set in a classroom, that music video. Um, but yeah, I feel like a lot of these songs are about the feeling of loss after a breakup and also a connection that can be so deep that it feels like a loss even while you're in it if that makes sense so like sometimes when you like someone so much or it's that kind of twin flame vibe and everything hits you about this person like there's so much intensity there and there's so much feeling there that if they just say some little tiny sharp word to you like maybe um like they're like oh did you put forget to put on socks today and you're wearing like sneakers without socks or something and then for the rest of the day you'll be like ruminating about that and you'll be like oh my god I look like such a weirdo I didn't I'm not wearing socks I wonder if my feet smell like something like that you know and they were maybe just asking like oh you're not wearing socks oh cool and they weren't meaning anything bad about it but sometimes when you have this deep twin flame connection you feel so connected to someone and you feel like you guys know each other so well which is I feel like the vibe you guys have together then it's like even the slightest word and maybe this is why this person is coming through with that five of cups energy and almost an apology but I don't even know if that's the right word for it it just feels like they're very sad about something and they're kind of taking on blame or acting pathetic I don't know if that's I know that's kind of harsh but I do have an Aries third house so it, sometimes things come out harsher than I intend but not pathetic but like um but like kind of sad and down in the dumps and just like 
almost apologetic but I'm like did they even do anything bad or are they just being kind of like really emo um, about things are they just being like really dramatic but it feels like they have beat themselves up and they have definitely you know like put themselves through the ringer emotionally about this and they have definitely been sad upset angry I feel like they have like they're beating themselves up and like beating their head against the wall like oh my god I screwed this up and I'm hearing the lines from awful things that's like bother me tell me awful things you know I love it when you do that and I feel like everything you did around them you know even if you were like oh am I being kind of annoying with this like that line bother me tell me awful things like it's not even like they need to see you in this perfect lens or they need to see you in this perfect light of like you on your best behavior it's like they'll take you on your worst day you know they'll take you when you're like mad at them they'll take you when you're in a tizzy about something when you're hangry when you're upset they love all of it you know and also Sunday morning by no doubt is a total break up song like I I love it it's my favorite breakup song it's totally underrated you should listen to it if you like breakup songs but it's like very gleeful and it's basically about how Gwen's ex boyfriend who's in the band as she sings this song so savage on her end that she made them like sing this or play this um but how he was breaking up with like there was a Sunday when she hid behind a door and locked herself inside the ba a bathroom and her boyfriend came and like was singing so love songs to her to, to get her out. Kind of a weird story, I guess, now that I'm saying it. And anyway, then she wrote this breakup song about sappy, pathetic little me that was the girl I used to be. But basically, and then she says, you had me on my knees. Um, but now it's a different Sunday and look at me now. And I I love that whole song like I know pretty much all the lyrics because it's just like gloating it's like I was down there and now I'm up here and I feel like in a way this person is still in that energy where they feel like they were sappy and pathetic around you they feel like they didn't make an impression I I don't a good impression I don't know if they said something stupid or they did something stupid around you but they're honestly coming through a little frantic like they they definitely feel like they did something to ruin this and I feel like they are really putting themselves under a lot of scrutiny like torturing themselves almost about like how could I have messed this up what the heck why did I do this we also got death by a thousand cups which is obviously a breakup song all about the pain of when you're breaking up broken up with someone and then everywhere you go reminds you of them everything you do you're like you see them everywhere you you know in your head you're Everything reminds you like, oh, that's where we got coffee. That's where we used to walk their dogs. That's where we, that's where they live. Oh my God, I have to drive past their apartment. Oh my God, all these feelings. I remember the first time I drove over here and it was so intense. Like I, I was so excited and I was so nervous. And now I, <laughs> we're on the other side of that and I'm nervous in a different way. I don't want to run into them. Like the agony of that breakup so I feel like this person does worry about running into you does worry about your opinion of them and it does seem like they're taking it really hard if this was a breakup or you guys just aren't seeing each other anymore I feel like they still look around for you want to see you want to run into you definitely miss you um and they are like saying kind of like I'm an idiot oh why did I handle it this way why did I why 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 what is wrong with me kind of vibe let me get some um dice for pile three astrology dice okay so we got Scorpio 10th house and Saturn so let me spin this again and that just rolled over onto Neptune but it's supposed to be Saturn um but let's spin this dice again since we got a double first house Aries okay so we got Capricorn Aries and Scorpio represented Woo! talk about powerhouse intense energies dang um so this might be where the intimidation is coming in. If these are your placements, I could definitely see where they're intimidated. If you're Aries, um, 
Scorpio or Capricorn dominant, it can definitely make you intimidating. But Scorpio is really all about that deep soul connection. It also can be about past lives together. It also can be about trauma. So if you guys went through a lot in your relationship or your connection, like maybe it, it wasn't even that you guys were together in an exclusive committed relationship for a long time, but maybe while you were together, you talked about really deep subjects or you unpacked each other's trauma or you talked about each other's families and like cried with each other or you went to a really deep level or maybe you didn't even have to have those conversations that early but things just got really deep and the feelings got really deep early on i always think scorpios are so like i think most scorpios i know they make their minds up very quickly and they'll always still be cautious around someone and kind of suss them out but being a highly psychic sign in my experience a lot of scorpios they like know immediately whether they like someone or not and they don't like the vast majority of people <laughs> to be honest scorpios you can deny it but you know it's true um and so when they do find someone they like they're kind of obsessive and like it's rare because scorpios are actually one of the most i mean probably everyone would say like the sexiest sign right so they usually have a lot of admirers people who think they're really cool and badass but for the most part a lot of scorpios are like nope 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 and don't really like anyone and then when they do find someone they do like they're like 100 in 100 obsessed all in and all gas no breaks and they don't need um they don't kind of need time to make up their mind and go back and forth and Aries is that way as well I mean both are Mars ruled and Mars is also like quick action and decisiveness and in my experience both Aries and Scorpio and both are debilitated in Venus and I have an Aries Venus so I kind of understand it just are all or nothing are like very making your mind up and I just saw 222 on my clock so I feel like with this person and you, it might have been that instant connection. And it might be a situation where they don't like everyone. You know, Aries is that way as well. It's like not necessarily liking everyone, but when they're into it, they're 100% in. They're like all the way in, all the enthusiasm. I know that's how my Aries Venus is, is like, you know... If it's if I like someone which is not that common but then I really like them from the jump and there's no like slow gradual build that other people describe I couldn't even imagine that happening because it's just so instantaneous um, so I feel like with you it was like you guys just instantly it was a vibe it was an instant connection it was instantly like wanting to talk and be, being drawn and thinking of the person a lot and feeling like you knew the person really well even though you guys might have just met and so yeah I feel like this person is just like how am I gonna find this with someone else and Saturn can be restriction I don't want to be like down on Saturn because of course everyone's scared enough of Saturn and I actually think it can be really positive when you're having a tr Saturn transit but Saturn can to a certain extent be suffering or is related to or associated with suffering and I definitely feel like this has been a really hard lesson for this person this has been you know they have had to do a lot of soul growth because of this this has been something that definitely hasn't just been a beautiful funny happy experience that they might have thought it would be at first like I feel like that was the vibe between you guys at first was like probably a lot of laughing a lot of fun with each other just a good time happiness and just like ah oh, this is awesome and it's funny because it's like devolved to like hell of this breakup situation and um and feeling such a loss and feeling like this just hardship and having to go through this growth and inner work and so yeah this person is definitely taking it very hard very seriously and um and yeah they are definitely going through it pile three wow this was this was a lot to tune into we're gonna finish this over on my patreon so if you guys resonate with this energy and you want to know more about this person and their feelings we're gonna go into a lot greater detail over there we're gonna get channeled messages and a channeled letter from this person and we're also going to figure out a timeline of when you guys might reconnect or they might be reaching out to you when that would be if that will happen and a lot more detail about their feelings so if you would like to join us over there on patreon head to the link in my description and underneath the timestamps in the comments and of course when you do sign up you get access to all my existing readings so over 35 existing readings about life love spirituality relocation all different kinds of topics um, and we also vote on new topics suggest new topics i just posted one like two days ago that's about what 
is happening with your career, which you need to know about that and your destiny as well. So that one is a really deep one, um, but new ones go up all the time. So I would love to have you join us over there and listen to the extended version of this and get access to all my other readings. So if you'd like to sign up, head on over to Patreon, a link in my description and under underneath the timestamps in the comments. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how it did resonate. If this is this person's energy, I do feel bad for them because this is, this is a lot. This is very intense. Their feelings are very strong for you. So let me know what was going on with this relationship, situation, jib, whatever it was and why they're so sad. Also make sure to hit the thumbs up button guys if this did resonate and make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you can find out as soon as I post. I would love to have you here. And if you would like a private one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can also get that at my website briarrosetarot.com and get a half hour or a full hour session with me and ask me whatever questions you would like or just have me open channel to spirit and give you a more traditional psychic reading however you would like it live or pre-recorded you get to kind of choose so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back very soon for another reading take care guys or I'll see you imminently right over on patreon right now but anyway I'll see you then guys take care bye Hey Pile 4, welcome to your reading. So for your tarot, you guys got the Ace of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, Ace of Wands, Two of Wands, King of Cups, and the Three of Swords. So your person definitely wants a fresh start with you and fantasizes about a fresh start happening. On one hand, they definitely want a new sexual start with you. They want to be able to get things back to a sexual relationship or get things to that point where you guys are able to have that flirtatious connection, that vibe with you, but also they want something long term with a lot of longevity. So I feel like this person also might fantasize about traveling with you or visiting different places, taking you on a really nice vacation or something like that. I feel like they fantasize about coming correct when it comes to you. So like when they would show up that they would know what to say, that they would be able to present themselves in a really good way. They would, you know, have the right words to say, probably like the nice car, take you to the nice restaurant, that everything would be on point. And I feel like they might fantasize about running into you at a time when like they're looking really good or they're, you know, they just got done from like working out at the gym or something and maybe like they have a little sweat and they're glistening in an attractive way or maybe like when they just put makeup on or, you know, something where they're looking really good depending on who they are, masculine, feminine, if they wear makeup, if they don't, you know, but that's going to go into how they would have the dream of presenting themselves. But I feel like they want to run into you at a time when like they're looking their absolute best they're feeling their most confident and they're able to present to you the best version of themselves another thing that's coming through is that they do fantasize about being really emotionally vulnerable with you they fantasize about being able to tell you about their day i feel like you have missed a lot of things in each other's lives is what they're saying like and for them that has been something sorry i just dropped my mic Sorry, um, but that has been something that I feel like really weighs on them and that really does have an effect on them. Like the time that's passed, the fact that you guys have had these big life events happen. It's like, I feel like there were times when they wanted to tell you things and they just couldn't tell you. And maybe they had this urge to like pick up the phone or to, you know, just had this instinct, this feeling of like, oh, I can't wait to tell Pile 4 about this. And then oh wait we're not talking anymore or I don't see them anymore or whatever and I feel like they really want to be able to just get kind of vulnerable with you and have those conversations and really let things loose and unleash on you you know um and get things to a place where like they're a lot deeper with you because I also feel like for them, it matters a lot, the emotional connection you guys had. And I feel like they feel very safe being emotional with you. Maybe you guys are excellent listeners or you're just very loving and kind. But I really feel like they felt like they could open up to you, kind of tell you anything. And having you not in their life, it really does have an effect on them. Um, it really does weigh on them that like they no longer have access to that side of you that you were always so giving to them and would be so gentle and kind and open to them and now it's like oh okay that's ship sailed I guess I guess I don't have access to that anymore but that kind of stinks um but yeah I feel like this person 
definitely wouldn't mind traveling with you. That's another thing. I feel like part of their fantasies would be just being able to go to a place with you, you know, you guys one-on-one -on -one and taking you out to a really nice vacation. I'm seeing one of those like huts over the ocean, you know, how like in the Maldives or different places like that, there'll be those like little individual cabana things that will be over the ocean and you can walk into your, you can walk along the dock to like your hotel room um, and then you have your own individual cabin. I feel like that's the kind of thing they fantasize about like a really lovely nice vacation with you but they definitely have a lot of sexual desire for you that's coming through really strong. They do find you very sexy. Something about your hair. Some of you guys have slightly curly hair or like a natural wave to your hair and that's something they find very attractive, very beautiful. Also your lips when you guys smile is especially I'm seeing like the edges of someone's lips curl up and I feel like they see it as so beautiful. Some of you guys can be like quite sassy and when you like something you get all excited like your face lights up like a little kid and you just get all like yay like kind of in a funny way or if someone's saying something you don't like too you can like put them in their place or you might have like really funny witty comebacks. And I feel like this person misses that about you. Like they would just get a kick out of you. And I'm hearing that song by Frank Sinatra, I get a kick out of you. So you would kind of make them crack up in a way. Like they just, you made them laugh and you were like a good time. Um, and so I feel like when they're doing, when they're thinking about you now, they're thinking about doing things over and actually taking it seriously. It feels like before maybe things didn't feel as serious or maybe they kind of took for granted the time they had with you and thought that they were going to have all the time in the world and thought that like, there was no need to rush and oh well we'll figure it out and like you know we have forever and now I feel like they're realizing that they definitely don't have forever and that they really kind of messed things up and they really didn't have the best time management situation when it comes to you um they should have probably gone in there from the beginning being a lot more serious taking things seriously not thinking oh i have all the time in the world or like we can just stay friends for right now and sooner or later things will become romantic like i feel like they're finally realizing that um they're gonna have to take initiative with this and that they should have taken initiative with this and that when they won't take initiative or refuse to take initiative that it's never going to progress just like the person who might want money but they never do anything to earn money they never have a job and probably it's going to be harder for money to come in you know even if their spirit guides are working for that like there needs to be some avenue for money in some way that can allow that portal to kind of open and for this person it feels like they just kind of thought things were going to figure itself out thought that they had all the time in the world they could just sit back relax and enjoy being with you and i don't think they took it that serious i think your absence from their life has finally made them take it serious and there's a saying about people don't learn from your words they learn from your actions and your absence and i feel like that has been the case with this person like they i don't want to say took you for granted but i think they really just thought like okay like yeah no we vibe and I really like them, but like I have all this time, we'll figure it out, we're going to sooner or later come together, not taking responsibility for that. And another thing they fantasize about is being that knight of wands who goes after things with his full force of power, who is going to pursue someone 100% and who is going to lean into it and just go after what he wants and not going to uh be wishy-washy be nervous get in his head be like well maybe it'll just magically work out one energy is going for it with the sh full force of your will going after something that feels very divinely appointed and where you have this natural spark for it speaking of i definitely feel like this person felt a natural connection with you instantaneously when they met you things might have grown over time but it feels like whenever they first saw you they were very attracted to you and they did feel like strangely drawn to you like um probably even before you guys ever talked or had a conversation i feel like this person just felt like kind of hmm, i'm curious about that person or i feel this spark or I feel so different around them. Who is this person? And there was all this curiosity. Then when you guys got to be together and spend time together, I feel like that morphed into, oh, they're really cool. And almost like, I don't want to say saw you as a friend, but in a way tried to make themselves see you as a friend. Like maybe you guys met in a situation where it would have been weird if you started dating right away or where you started as coworkers or as classmates or something like that, where 
it wasn't necessarily romantic immediately and this person might have felt like you know it'll be inappropriate if i just ask this person out so i'm not going to get things messy i'm just going to keep things cordial and casual and i feel like they really did try to make that work but over time their feelings just got stronger and stronger and they couldn't run away from it they couldn't pretend that these feelings didn't exist that might have been their intention and they might have been really hoping that you know they weren't going to actually care that much and that those feelings would go away but sooner or later they kind of had to acknowledge like okay these feelings aren't going anywhere and i keep thinking of them romantically and and you know they're really hot i noticed it the first time i saw them but i kept trying to push that down but i keep noticing how hot they are and i can't really run away from it anymore and they are experiencing some heartbreak from this we do have the three of swords so they definitely are feeling sad you know they definitely are feeling like they miss you and feeling heartbroken i also had the ten of swords fly out but i didn't want to mess up the flow of the cards so I didn't use that but that flew out at the end so we got the two three of swords and the ten of swords so there was definitely a lot of heartbreak and a feeling of loss and I almost feel like this person is saying something like I met I I lost my best friend like I feel like the conversation was just really on point and they could trust you also another thing is they kind of look up to you they rely on you they see you as a very like um high quality individual you know what I mean like someone who just has their head screwed on straight someone who's really smart someone who's good with their time money their life someone who's just very competent and so for them being separated from you this is just you know I definitely feel like they miss even getting your opinion on certain things like I feel like you guys would give amazing advice pile for and I feel like they miss being able to like just tune in and ask you certain things and get your opinion let me get some of these cards as well these song cards and I'm not going to I don't have like a cute little coffee mug so I'm just pulling them from this little plastic bag they're in so Anyway, you'll have to trust me that I'm not pre-selecting anything. So we got Vulnerable, Selena Gomez, Orange Trees, Marina. No One's Gonna Love You, Band of Horses. And let's see what else. Okay, that's a bad word, but we got Ape by Beyonce and Jay-Z. Can't say the full word. Love Stoned, Justin Timberlake, and The Only Exception, Paramore. Oh, that's such a sweet song. And finally, final, Just Say Yes by Snow Patrol. So very romantic songs. Um, and I feel like with that ape, you know, by Beyonce and Jay-Z, What's coming to my mind is that you guys just have a lot of fun together. Like when you guys are on with each other, you're on with each other. You might be making jokes, clowning each other or laughing together. But I feel like this person really enjoys seeing your smile. This person really feels like you have this connection. And it's something that they really miss is kind of this like, I find sometimes when soulmates get together and they have past lives together, they can almost give off a vibe of siblings. I know this is odd, but it's because like you spent so many past lifetimes Times together you know each other super well just like I think that's what's special about siblings is like you guys you know your siblings like the back of your hand so you know you can tell when they're like no I'm fine and they're really upset in a way that you can't even with your best friends like you know your siblings so well you're like something happened they're upset and um same with like if they're excited you know what's going to make them laugh even if it's the stupidest thing in the world and you're like you're so dumb for laughing at this you know you're like come look at this you're gonna crack up because you know their sense of humor and that's kind of how it is sometimes with soulmates because like you spent like eight lifetimes together you know each other's humor you know what i mean and i feel like maybe that's the vibe with you guys is like it was instantaneous knowing each other knowing what to say to each other and it's interesting we got orange trees by marina because that song is all about in my opinion i mean obviously i didn't write it so i don't know but like travel and um yeah she's like flowers by the beach i belong by the sea um where we used to be standing in the orange trees and it's a really like vibey song and I feel like this person would love to go to these tropical locations with you I keep getting that for some reason it must be a major fantasy for them um I don't know maybe you guys look really good in a bikini or you're just a tropical vibe type person maybe you're a beach vibe but I just feel like they really would love to go to some kind of tropical destination and just 
kind of treat you to that or get to see you in that vibe. Um, but then we have a lot of these songs that talk about the emotional intensity that's underpinning this. So we got No One's Gonna Love You by Band of Horses. And that, I know it doesn't sound romantic, but the song lyric is actually No One's Gonna Love You the Way That I Do. Um, and the only exception, Paramore, Just Say Yes, Snow Patrol, really intense songs about feeling this deep love for someone, feeling like, you know, they're the only one for you and like no one could possibly love you more than me because I love you so much that it's just literally impossible that anyone else could feel the same way about you or more than me because I'm feeling like the maximum amount of love and I wish I could be with you. So I feel like in a way even though this person might have tried initially to downplay things in their mind or to be like no like we're friends it's cool yeah I find them hot but I mean we're you know we're co-workers and we got to keep it at that. I feel like they ultimately do feel super super um drawn to you and then it started getting emotionally deeper it started getting more real for them it stopped just being like a yeah they're hot and they're cool too yeah into like okay like I really feel like this is kind of wifey or husband like this is this is intense and I feel like no one knows me. I almost feel like for some of them, there might have been some traumatic event or something that happened within their life when you knew them and like you talked them through it or gave them some support during this time. And that was the thing that really made them see you as like, oh my God, I can tell them anything. They're so understanding. It might even be you talking to them about like your um, family or something like that. Like you maybe you had... Or like them talking to you about their family or you guys talking to each other about, you know, deep childhood stuff or like deep feelings about certain things. I don't know, but it just feels like it reached a point where it really crashed, crossed a threshold and got very deep and very emotional. And I feel like this person just you know, they haven't had that experience with someone else. You are the exception for them. You know, they might have even been closed off to relationships because I know that's what that song talks about um, is coming from like a divorce and having this idea of like love is, I'm not open to love. Love is always going to hurt. And then realizing like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go there with this person though. They, for them, I'll do that. For them, I'll put my heart at risk. And we also got vulnerable by Selena Gomez. And I feel like in a way, this person is a little regretful that they weren't more vulnerable with you. And I feel like they fantasize about almost coming to you and like telling you all their feelings, like reading you, you know, a letter that they wrote to you and being like, okay, I, I've got to be honest with you. I've been in love with you or something like that. I've got to be honest with you, but like, I can't stop thinking about you. I feel like they wish they had the bravery to actually do that, to actually carry that out. They wish they were bold enough and strong enough and had the honesty and the strength to really put it all out there in a way that they just don't feel ready right now. They just don't feel comfortable to actually put it all on the line. Um, and of course, that takes a lot of bravery for everyone. But I feel like that's something they just dream about is like working themselves up to that and finally laying it all on the line and having you have a positive reaction to that, seeing you accept them and seeing you, you know, welcome them in with open arms and be receptive to it. I think that's something that for them would just mean the whole world and is something that I guess they they must spend a lot of time thinking about because it keeps coming up. So let's get some astrology dice for this situation as well. Okay, so we got Aquarius, 12th house, and Capricorn. So Pisces, Capricorn, and Aquarius. That's actually Saturn, but relates to Capricorn. So Pisces, Capricorn, Aquarius vibes. So um, maybe some of you guys have placements there. So those are all, those are like the last houses of the Zodiac, which is really interesting. And honestly, it's making me think of past life connections because supposedly one of the one theories about astrology is you incarnate one by one through the, through the Zodiac signs. So Aries being the first house and then 12th house being the final house. So that means if you're like 12th house Pisces, then you've incorporated before as each of the other signs and you have had a lot of experiences. Same with Aquarius, 11th house. So 
you know, maybe one last lifetime, but you still have had a lot of experience. Um, and I feel like you guys have just spent a lot of lifetimes together and know each other really well. And this was a very deep relationship because those are kind of the deeper, more intense houses as well. You know, 12th house is really deep. Um, you know, 11th house, Saturn, there's a lot more kind of maturity um, and like inward focus. I feel like that comes with those houses um, of having to go really deep and dealing with kind of philosophical questions, not just like, how much money am I going to earn, but more like, you know, what is my social circle like, or what kind of spirituality do I have, or what do I do for my career? So kind of those big, big questions. And I feel like even though you guys met, may have met in a situation where there was like a lot of small talk, and maybe you met at work, and everyone's like gabbing around the water cooler, but it feels like you guys got really deep really fast with your conversations, much faster than people might have expected from the amount of time you knew each other. Um, and it feels like there was this otherworldly connection, like you guys kind of know each other on the astral plane, hang out on the astral plane. So you guys might have dreams of each other. You might visit each other in dreams, or maybe you're just like driving and suddenly all the songs on the radio come on and remind you of this person or our songs you listen to with this person. And you're like, what is going on? And I could definitely see you guys having this connection and being drawn to each other on the astral plane. There's also something about friends um, relating to this relationship. So maybe friends keeping you apart or friends having something to say that like, maybe you were afraid to rock the boat with friends or with coworkers with that 10th house energy as well. Maybe you guys were afraid to like bring everyone into the office in an awkward situation. So you just kept it cash. So you just didn't follow through on your feelings and you just were like, no, like it's no, we're just cool. We're just casual. But really you do have those feelings, but you know, maybe you were afraid that everyone would get awkward and weird if you guys started dating in the office. So you just tried to keep it copacetic, tried to keep it kind of under wraps but i feel like those feelings just kept growing the intensity was there and 12th house is also a kind of hidden very nebulous foggy house and i do feel like this was also a very hidden thing like this person didn't really feel comfortable talking about their feelings with anyone else i feel like they just mostly kept it to themselves and thought about it at night and would really ruminate i feel like they definitely think about you a lot at night um and go back and forth but there was almost this feeling of like I can't do this or this is really risky or I'm gonna look like a fool or I'm kind of crazy for even thinking about this like this is a mess this this situation can't happen this relationship can't happen um and you know 12th house can be the house of kind of undoing and of death on one hand so I feel like this person was very afraid that if they were to pursue you and it was to like fail or things didn't work out that there would be really bad consequences somehow so it feels like they just kind of avoided that um but I feel like they kept thinking they had this under control they could kind of control it they could kind of out run it they could kind of keep everything under wraps and just keep things at a little bit of a distance and that everything would turn out fine like I'm just gonna run from my emotions I'm just gonna pretend everything's okay and you know what it's gonna work out and my feelings are gonna go away and I'm just gonna get over this person sooner or later you know maybe they took a lot of advice that people take in the course of a breakup like go out and date other people or don't think about that person you know keep yourself busy get a hobby or maybe other you know other advice on the opposite side like write about this person in your journal or meditate on them or um you know buy yourself a pint of ben and jerry's and cry into it about this person and i feel like they did everything you know they followed every trick under the book and they're like i still care about this person i still think about them like to the same extent i think about them all the time none of this worked this definitely didn't work at all if anything i miss them more because when i go out on these dates or when i journal about them i'm just overwhelmed with my thoughts and feelings for them and i can't get away from them and it does feel like their feelings are very intense and they probably think about you a lot and are kind of in that way contacting you on the astral plane so you guys are probably like why the heck do I think about this person and I'm minding my business I'm not trying to think about them but it just overwhelming my thoughts with them and I feel like that's because they think about you so much um and they definitely are thinking about you romantically we very sexually to be honest with that ace of wands um so yeah this is something that I feel like you're on their mind quite a lot 
And what they really want, what I'm hearing is I want a second chance, something about a second chance. So yeah, I think we are going to be getting into this in a lot greater detail over on Patreon. We're going to be channeling messages from them, a letter I'm going to channel from them. And we're also going to be getting a timeline of when they might be approaching you when they, if they are going to be reaching out or if they're not, and also the timeline within that and a lot more deeper messages about them. So if this did resonate with you and you want to find out more about their thoughts, feelings, and where we're able to talk a little bit more about the Ace of Wands, since, you know, this is YouTube, that's Patreon, we can talk a little bit more, um, then head on over to my Patreon link for that is in the description and underneath the timestamps in the comments as well. Um, and so I would love to have you there when you do sign up, you get access to all of my readings, over 35 readings about life, love, spirituality, relocation, career. And speaking of career, I just posted a reading two days ago that's a very long deep career reading about your destiny career messages from your future self and your life purpose so definitely check that out and like I said when you sign up to get this extended reading you get access to it all we also vote on new readings and suggest new readings and it's just a lot of fun over there so I would love to have you join us and like I said the link for that is in my description and underneath the timestamps in the comments if you want to find out more about this um, and also you guys thank you so much for watching make sure to leave it a thumbs up if it did resonate and make sure to subscribe and turn those notifications on so you can find out as soon as I post. Also, I would love to hear how this did resonate with you. If this is someone that you knew as like a coworker or a friend or in some kind of non-romantic context, uh, context, but you had developing feelings for it, let me know. I would love to hear exactly how this developed or how this applied to you. I'm always curious and nosy about these situations. So definitely let me know guys. And finally, if you guys want a private one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can also get that at my website, briarrosehero.com and get a half hour or a full hour session with me. Have me channel whatever questions you would like whatever you want me to ask about within reason. I guess there's a couple questions that might be off limits, but most questions are totally allowed. Um, I'm happy to answer whatever for you um, or just have me open channel in kind of a traditional psychic medium session. Either one of those is totally cool. So you get to decide how the session goes. And if you would like to book that, head to my website, briarrosecaro.com. Link for that is also in my description. So with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I am sending you so much love and light. I'll be back very soon for another reading. So take care, guys, and I'll see you then. Bye.